Hey, scrapbook friends, it's Nicole, and I'm here today to show you how to do what I call a color block page. Now, this is one that I showed in my recent Disneyland album flip through. This is probably the most elaborate color block page I've ever done, uh, but this is the one that I said I would teach you how to do it if you wanted to, and so I'm going to start with this one. This is not what I'm going to teach you. This is like the next level um, where you've fill in all these other boxes. But what we're gonna do today is a much simpler version of a color block page where um, we're gonna put pictures and then fill in the spaces with paper. Now you can, like I did with that Disneyland one, then you could decorate up some of these little spaces however you want, but I'm just gonna kind of teach you the basic. I know that there are templates you can buy um, that will do this for you that's a very easy way to do it. Um, there are probably ways you can measure and plan it out in advance. That's not the way I do it. You guys know, those of you who know me know that I am I tend to be a little bit more free form. Um, I like to kind of just go with it and, and do the easy way. This one does have a little peekaboo. This is a sneak preview of a, an album I'm not done with yet. You can see it doesn't have any titles or journaling on it. I'll probably journal in some of these spaces. Um, so, what I'm going to show you is just the way I do these kind of color block type pages and hopefully it will teach you or maybe make you realize this isn't the way you want to do it and then you're going to look for the, the templates or the stencils. But for me, this is this is what I do. I do this a lot. Um, I, I probably, I don't want to say I do it in every single album, but it's a great way to do a lot, a lot of pictures in one album. So for this project today, I have some pictures. I've been working on a Disney trip with my daughter from a couple of years ago. And this was when they were just introducing the new little s Skyway. It has a different name. I can't remember what it is. But we stopped and took a bunch of pictures of it. That's the same picture. Um, and we just thought it was pretty cool. So I'm going to do a layout uh, with about these pictures of the Skyway. One of these things tells me what it was actually called. Um, and you can see that they're just kind of all the same. A lot of little tiny weird random pictures. I don't need the whole picture. I just kind of want the little sky cars. Um, here it goes, Skyliner, that was the name of it. So I'm gonna put that sign. I wanna put some of these little guys and then we got some close-ups of a couple of the cars that had um, characters on it. Okay, <laughs> obviously I've passed through that, but it's just something like that. We want. I just wanna do that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I actually, I, I, I went through these earlier to find some paper that I wanted to, to use with this. This is a great way to use um, old papers. If you have like old photo mats, um, scraps of paper, that works really well for this because you're, you're going to, you don't need anything as even as big as a picture. Everything is going to be smaller. But I'm going to use, I, I got this Modern Moments paper. I don't actually know how I got it. I it was probably some kind of a an incentive. I don't think I've ever used it. It looks like it's six papers, which means it's one of those little half paper packs that we get to, for some things with CM once in a while. But I've never used it, and I don't. It doesn't have any embellishments or anything else that goes with it. But this um, this kind of this green stripe that's in here feels similar to kind of this green that's in the little building. So that's how I decided to do it. Just something that was kind of neutral, but had a lot of patterns that I can choose from. All right, so the first thing I need to do is pick a background page. And I think I, you can use cardstock. I think I might do this yellow. I didn't think this part through quite well enough. I think I'm going to do the yellow. I'm going to turn it like that. I don't know, now that's the same. Okay, I turn it like that. Okay, I think I'll use the yellow as my background. And then I'm just going to kind of figure out how I want to have these on the page. Now, I know I want the picture of my daughter. I want that one for sure going through the gate. That one is a good one. These are the little individuals. Maybe these, one of these. Probably a bunch of these. Oh, that's a good one too, that vertical one. There's the one of her. 
these are little individual cars. And I don't know about the rest of these. I may end up using some of the rest of these because they're just little tiny and that might fit in well. Just depending on what I need. And that was actually at a different spot. So that's the same picture. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just kind of start with these pictures. And I know I want this one to kind of be my focal point and I think I'm going to mat it. Um, so what I, what I like to do is to start with the pictures that I'm going to keep whole. I think I'm actually going to cut that one because I don't need all that sidewalk. That one I might keep whole. That one's got the palm tree kind of blocking it. That one, maybe I want that one. Okay. So now I'm going to take my trimmer and kind of create the pictures that show off the things that I want to, to, to feature. And I like to keep my pictures um, a little bit standard. So this one's going to be three inches, three by four. I'm not going to try and make them all the same, but I am going to try and keep them on the inch, the half inch or the quarter inch mark. Just so like that just makes it a smidge easier for me. So like this one is going to turn out to be three by three. This one, I don't know that I need many of those overhead lines. I think I can do that one three by three as well. It is nice to have a few that are similar size. This will probably be a three by four. So much of this is going to depend on your pictures. Cut the head off that that palm tree because I don't really need it. So this is going to be two and a half by six. Actually, I'm going to cut that part off. So I think I'm going to make this five inches. Mm, five and a half, I guess. So if you saw my other video, I just marked that with my thumbnail. Let me try and find. Okay, that didn't work. I do really, really wish that this was just a smidge wider so we could trim a, a six inch photo more easily. Mm. These two, this could be a four. And I'll see, this one's not gonna fit four by four, so I'll do this one four and a half. We'll do four and a half by three and a half. This one too. I'll do this one three by four because I have a few of those three by fours. That one I'm going to keep the same size. And these I'm going to kind of wait and see on and use those to fill in some of my gaps. Okay. So I think I want to put this here actually. And maybe I want to put this over here. Because this was kind of, we, we saw this first. We pulled into the parking lot. We saw the little Skyliner going. And my daughter and I are pretty much Disney geeks. And so we were geeking out about it. Although that's almost the same picture, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. Oh, this one I wanted to map that picture. And so you see, I'm kind of lining these up, not, not trying to have them all be the same, but I am making some kind of straight lines, lines that, you know, go together just to make it a little bit easier for me. All right, I think that's a good place to start. So I'm going to start with this picture of her. And this would have been a good paper if I had a paper pack that had, um, a mat pack in it. Actually, now that I'm looking at this paper that I picked, the um, there's not a lot of variety. This is all gonna kind of be these blues. I got either the white lines. Yeah, that's all I've got. Hmm. Oh well, it's gonna work, I'll make it work. But I think I want to put then her, the picture of her, I'm gonna mat it on this. And I think I want to put the paper this way because I feel like it shows a little bit of motion. 
So this is a four by six photo and I think I wanna have a quarter inch mat. So let me use my straight trimmer. Um, I was actually noticing something the other day. I was watching another advisor's video and when she cuts a mat, she just cuts down to the part she needs and turns her paper and cuts. I never do that. I always just cut off a whole, cut off the whole strip, even if I'm only gonna use part of it because um, I find it easier to store my scraps when, I, when they're in complete pieces. All right, let's see where I put my tape. I'm gonna put this one on, and I could have just cut this at four by four and a half by six and a half, but I'm just gonna mount this on here. And then I'm gonna eyeball it. So you're gonna see that I'm doing a whole lot of eyeballing. You are gonna want a pencil for this, or um, yeah, it, not, not even a pen. It's gotta kinda gotta be a pencil. All right. So when I'm cutting and I'm just kind of eyeballing, I've kind of figured out that this little line, it's just the little groove. It's not the grid line. It's not anything. But that little line is, in my head, that's the quarter inch. So I'm going to line this piece of the picture up with that line. And that's going to give me that quarter inch. It might not be exactly a quarter inch, but for my purposes, that's gonna be good enough. All right, so all the rest of these, I'm just going to adhere, I'm gonna adhere this down. Actually, it might be a good idea to use repo on this if, you, if you're a person that loves the repo adhesive. Um, I'm wondering if I want the paper to directionally go that way. No, I do not, okay. So I'm just gonna stick this down and I'm just kind of eyeballing it and you are gonna end up doing some moving some things around and then I'm going to put my other pictures on here actually I think I'll put this one down at the bottom trying to keep about an equal distance I think I will line this one up with the bottom of this so I have that kind of um, horizontal line just for some um, I don't think it's visual rest I think I've talked to you guys about visual rest before but just for some something for your eye to rest on I'm leaving a gap right there on purpose I'll put this over here kind of a similar gap and I'll put this one Basically, you're just kind of putting these kind of spread out, leaving some spaces in between, a little bit random, but not so random that they're gonna be unpleasant to look at. And I guess, I don't, I don't know how to, how to define that. Hmm. I don't really wanna have three full-size pictures on this side. I'm gonna cut off some of that. I don't need the whole little uh, Skyway station. Skyliner, why can't I remember that? I guess because there's been so many of these little kind of attractions over the years at different parks, they all have their own name. And actually, even though I've got this guy sitting up here in this corner, I think I wanna leave space to write, to do a title. So I think I'm gonna do that. Maybe. So I'm gonna leave this gap at the top across here that I can come back and put my title on. So this you could do with a, a ruler if you wanted to, but, and sometimes I do. Sometimes when I get to the, the end stage, in fact, maybe right now I will, if I can remember where I put my ruler. Tidied up my workspace and now I can't find anything. All right, so I think I am going to use this right here just so that I know that these guys are all straight together. And so this will be like right about there. 
Oops. Okay. So now I need to decide if I'm going to put paper in here or if I want to try and put a few more pictures in. And I think I want to put a few more pictures because I got these little tiny ones. So like right here, this piece is three and a half by three and an eighth. So if I do this, cut this three inches wide, let's see, I want to keep that 30, 30 years. All right, I want to put this whole like tower thing right here. So this is going to be three. Okay, actually, I'm not going to keep cutting it because this is where I don't want to, I don't really want to measure. I want to just eyeball. So I'm going to put this here kind of where the distance aside that I want it that way. I'm scooting it down. I'm going to find my pencil. And I'm going to mark in here about the distance that I want it to be from that side. Okay, so you can see I've just marked with a little bit, a little bit of pencil um, to have my cut line. And I'm going to cut that just inside of that line. So then that's going to fit right here. But of course, this is now too tall. But if I, I, I don't want to go too far. Uh, I don't want to cut into that tower because that's the whole thing I wanted to keep. So I'm just going to cut this piece now, the tower. I was paying attention to how deep it was this way. And actually, I think I cut it a little bit small. But yeah, I'm going to cut just a little bit above this. And put it in here again line it up with the top of that one but then it's too long right here so I'm just gonna mark again kind of where I want it and actually when I cut on this side it's a little easier because then the cutting mark is at the bottom when I put it in my personal trimmer okay so that fits in there Maybe I left my gaps a little bit bigger, but nobody's going to care. Okay. And I think, I think that might be enough on this side, but I do think I want to put a couple more of the little tinies over here. Um, oh, I definitely want to put that little guy and those two because they're together. Maybe those two. Um... Where do I want to put him? I think I want to put this guy right here. I want it to fit between these two pictures. And so again, I'm just going to eyeball it, mark the about where the, the cut needs to be. Okay, my trimmer. this right and actually what I'm doing here is I'm lining it up right along the, the other picture I've never really had to explain this while I've been doing it before so it's a good exercise for me to think out loud as I'm working on something I've done countless times and you can see that it's going pretty quick for me this is just not I don't have to think too much about it but I'm not measuring and so that makes it fast because I can just kind of eyeball it. And yeah, sometimes I mess up and sometimes I have to modify my plan. Right, I think I want these. I don't want the gate 35. Um, and I definitely, I don't know how wide I want it to be. Maybe I'll just cut up on that side of the tower. Because it doesn't matter if it's too small because I can put a picture in or a piece of paper in. But now I want it to be about the same height as this, but I'm gonna cut off, I kinda of want those red banners cut off. So I'm gonna cut it off here, and then I'm gonna match it with this one because I'm in this same space, it'll just be easier to cut at the exact same height as this guy. All right, does that work? So I'll put that right there.
Those two little guys can fit in there. I mean, you, you, could, you could take out your ruler and measure, you know, just to give you a ballpark of what you want. So this space is about one and a quarter inches. And so if I did it a little bit less than an inch, but I'm just gonna, I want it to fit the whole section. So if I cut that right there and go to the edge, cut off this support pole. I'll go to the edge that way. And then I'll come right here. So it's a little harder because it's tiny. Put it that way. All right, that fits in there and it should line up that edge and that edge. There you go. Okay. I th oh, I've got one more little tiny that I want to put up. I think I'll put it right up there in that corner. So, so much of this just depends on what, um, what pictures you have, how many you have, and how much you're able to crop them down. You do not necessarily want to fill this whole um, layout up with, um, with pictures. You want to leave a little bit of space for the color. But I think I'm going to put this little guy up here. So I'm going to measure about one and a half inches high. And I'm just going to put him. I don't think he's, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll do a whole one and a half inches. It might have been a little bit more than one and a half inches, though. Hmm. And then I'll just cut this into a square. Squares are easy. Oh, now it's too big. All right, so we're going to cut. Uh, one and a quarter, I guess. Oh, the space was one and a half inches high. I still want this to be a square. I think that will look better. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to have all my pictures in. All my pictures are, are in the space. All right, and that looks... That looks pretty good to me, a, a pretty kind of balanced layout. I've got some straight lines. Um, this one goes all the way across. I feel like that makes it a little bit less cluttered if you have a few that go together. Um, optional, I could move this one down and put it in there, but I like having that, that line up here. Um, I, think, I think that works well. So now I want to put I'm going to fill in these spaces with the papers that I have. Because I put this stripe right here, I don't want to put it too close over here. But I think I'm going to put it, I don't know if I want to put it sideways again. I'm going to put it right here. So what I like to do is use the back. Because that way my pencil line. I want it to line up with this paper here, or this picture here, and this out right there. I could even use this piece with the little, I hadn't thought about that, I was going to use that one, but now that I got this, I kind of like it with the lines. Oh, and that'll be super easy because I can just cut on this line right here, and that's going to line up. All right, so I'm going to leave that one with the lines. There's a little, a, a little lesson on changing my plan as I go. But you definitely need, want several choices of paper. I mean, I guess you could do the same and on that small world page, where I did them all in white and then I filled in with different artworks that work too. But I'd like to put this here now, but now I've cut it too much. Oh, I can put that blue line on here. Maybe I'll do that, okay. So I'm lining it up with this piece right here, but I also need it to go here. Just trying to keep it straight. So yeah, sometimes I don't quite get the, the pencil lines erased well. All right, that is not straight at all. I don't know what I just did. 
I really wanted the, I really wanted the strat. I wanted the yellow line and now I've cut it off. So I guess I'll do that yellow line. When you use the personal trimmer, you do want to use this top edge like the others. Okay, just to keep it straight. And I'm cutting off that yellow line after all. Okay. Now that's too short, I think. Well, it fits in there, but it, it lines up with this. But I think that gap is bigger than I like. Oh, well. Apparently, that's the gap I left. So... Now I'm going to line it up just with the picture, and that's how I'm going to do my line right here. The size. And sometimes I'll decide, you know what, I, I want a different paper here, or I want my, my things closer together. I usually leave more like an eighth of an inch. I don't know why this time I left a quarter of an inch. I think I'm not liking it as well with the quarter of an inch. So I'm trying to kind of line it up visually with this corner, that corner, and then this corner right here, just to make it fit in. This one, I think I need a pattern. I think I need to use this, um, these stars or diamonds, triangles, whatever they are. Sorry. Again, I'm going to cut on the back and I'm not going to use this um, side with the words. And of course, this one I'll need to trim with my 12 inch trimmer. I kind of want to save that little green grid in case I can fit it somewhere else. Interesting, I've never thought about it, but I do find myself reaching for the personal trimmer more doing this technique. Okay, that'll work right there. I've never really, you know, like I say, I've never thought about it because I've never done this for anyone except myself. I don't think I've ever demonstrated this for anybody at all. So now this whole section is full. I'm gonna put something up here. Maybe I'm gonna put these stripes again up there, but I'll do them vertically. And then this side. And of course, because I have um, so many pictures, I don't have that much space. This one, I left a gap here on purpose. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't know that I want it there. I think we're gonna scoot these guys up. And that way I'm just gonna put a tiny little strip right in there. And the tiny ones are a pain. I, I will grant you that. Um, so this piece. Hmm. Not going to fit in any of those. Well, I could, maybe it could go right here. This one's a little hard just because this paper pack wasn't a full, full paper pack. So I've only got these partial... partial pieces and I really I really wanted some extra colors I do see the pencil lines on there I'm gonna have to erase those in a little bit okay I think I'm gonna do the stripes across here and down there to kind of tie that together and I am gonna measure this one because it's going all the way across one okay so the space is like one and five eighths so I want to leave a gap and a gap. I'll cut it at one and a quarter. I like this side because it's got some of the yellow in it. Some of the green. But I'm not, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna leave it at the 12 inches because I want to line it up with um with the edges of the picture. So I'm gonna flip it over. Okay. 
marked it. I'll cut that off. position this and so you know this one is not the same um, quarter inch I left other places but I don't think it matters I think it just you just kind of want to fill those spaces in because it's lining up with the two pieces it needs to line up with it doesn't matter as much that the gap is smaller here than it is here I don't love this with the that little skinny blue strip I'm not sure if I'm going to care enough to fix it or if I'm just going to leave it be. All right, so now I've done this whole side and I feel like I've got to put more of this blue diamond in. So I don't think I'm going to put the stripe here after all. I think I'm going to do the blue diamond. But I still want to keep these vertical, so I'm going to cut this way. This is again one and a half, well one of five eighths. So if I cut it one and a quarter, that's why this is nice for, um, with scraps, because it is kind of painful to cut up a whole piece of paper to use in this, but I'll use it, the rest of it for something else. There are lots of ideas out there that use scraps. Okay, now that's too, too big. I want to line it up with that. I'm going to have to skinny this out a little bit. So the nice thing about this technique versus um, using a uh, template is that I can have my pictures, you know, I can start with the size that my pictures want to be and not, um, and not have to make my pictures fit into any specific size that the template manufacturer chose but it does require a little bit more kind of freewheeling and willingness to um just go with the flow all right so now i've got this here i think i need maybe more of these or maybe more of the lines or this i mean we'll put these little circles i haven't used the circles anywhere no that that's too short well just a hair too short i think i'm going to try that there Or I could do these uh, those other lines. Okay, and then I have to cut this. So you can see it's just kind of a matter of putting it on there. And then this one, I think it's going to line up with this white line on my trimmer to be pretty straight. It's so hard to cut little tiny pieces straight. That works. And you may want to use repo on this, but I just feel like my stuff is more secure when I use real, real permanent tape runner. And I don't use as much. For whatever reason, when I use repo, I use way more. And you're just erasing those little pencil marks while I'm here. I need something right in here. right here. Hmm. Ooh, I could do those little blue dots right there. Okay. I'm just going to figure out where those blue dots end. Oh, I could have used that little yellow grid too. Hmm. Which one? Which one? Oh, well, I used yellow right there, so I think the blue dots. Okay, that's too wide, but I'll cut it to the right length. All right, this is gonna go in here. And this one, I'm, I think I'm gonna need a little help as I cut it. So I think I'm gonna use a post-it note to help me decide how wide I want it to be. Not very wide at all. 
This one's nice because it's got these little blue dots which make a grid. So I've stuck the post-it note on so you can see that I lined it up with the grid and now I'm going to cut along the edge of the post-it. And then I'll know that it's the width that I want it to be. I'll actually confess to you that that's a new trick. I've never done that before, but it felt like it would work and I think it did. So I've got this little tiny piece can go in here. I've got two more places up here. I think I'll do another piece of this. Oh, this is even the right height already. Oh, I also have that. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I think I need more of the blue. So sorry, little yellow grid. I'll use this side just in case I want to use that for some other project sometime. Oh, and then I can just cut on that line. That'll work. Sorry, post it out. Okay, we'll use that. And then I just need to cut a smidge off the top of this. And I kind of don't want to cut the yellow stripe off because I like think that ties in better with the background. So I'm just going to trim a little hair off of this guy. Put it right there. Now I just need one piece for right here. Don't have enough of that. I got some of this, but I don't, I don't really want to have to cut this all up. So that is the kind of the bad thing is that I don't have any pieces. I'll use that. I wish I had one more pattern that what I don't love that this had just this white stripe on the back. Although this could have been good for some kind of journaling on something, but I'll just use that. And actually I think I'll cut it right here along this whoa, white line. No, yellow line. Mm-mm. Gotta be on the white line. I'm not using the post-it note to cut this time, just to position. right there all right so as you can see this is not scientific at all it's not there's no formulas there's no rules um, I just cut the pictures and position them first and then I fill in the gaps with paper or other small pictures now this paper pack doesn't have any stickers or anything that goes with it so I'm not gonna worry too much about, you know, putting any embellishments on. But of course, if you were using a, a collection that had stickers or embellishments and you wanted to, um, to add that, you absolutely could. Um, like I did on the, uh, that small world page that I showed you at the beginning where I put stuff in the squares. But that was pretty fast, I mean, for, for a layout, for me, um, I feel like that was that was pretty quick. I think it looks very visually pleasing. The secrets, I would tell you, are to have some lines, whether they're vertical or horizontal. I mean, like here, I've got these horizontal lines that are the same, and then this vertical line. Have a few lines that are the same. Try to keep your lines, your spacing as even as you can. Use a ruler if you need to. Um, use your 13-inch uh, cutting mat or some kind of a grid to position that. But... That went together pretty quick, wasn't hard, didn't have to do math. I just had to write with my pencil and, and mark where I wanted to cut and then do the cutting. So thanks very much. Thanks those of you who um, on my uh, previous video did tell me that you were, would be interested in seeing a color block technique. Um, hopefully this was enough information for you. If you have any questions, please ask me. If you need me to you know, demonstrate another one at some point in the future, um, I can do that too. Um, I enjoy... Uh, sharing some of the things I've come up with with other people, and I really love this uh, layout. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 pictures on one double page spread.
All right. Thanks very much. I would love to see what you do with this color block technique. Please feel free to message me through my website at NicoleScrapbooks.com or on my Facebook channel uh, through Nicole's Scrapbooks, or of course, if you are on my email list and you already know how to email me. So thanks very much and happy scrapbooking.